A developing story tonight. We're still waiting to get an update from Madison police if there are any new leads in the deadly hit and run crash from earlier this week that killed a man and his dog. But tonight, the Dane County Medical Examiner is identifying the victim. He is 66 year old Stephen Fleck. Preliminary aut autopsy results confirm that he died from injuries sustained in the crash. They say he was pronounced dead at the scene. Last night, police put out these photos of the suspect vehicle. They say it has a smashed front windshield and maybe a Chevy Malibu that frequents the area where the crash happened. Police say Fleck was walking his dog on Trader Road when they were hit and killed Wednesday night. They're asking anyone in the community to come forward with information. This is the second deadly hit and run on Trader Road in the past two years. When we see firefighters rush into a burning building, we may never consider what they look like behind their gear. But a group of black firefighters in Madison say representation matters, which is why they started Sable Flames back in the 1990s. Armand Rahman has a closer look at the group and its goal. Armand? Charlotte, in the past 30 years, Sable Flames has awarded more than 80 scholarships, totaling around $50,000 to people of color in the community. And two of those recipients went on to join the Madison Fire Department. It's all part of their bigger goal to improve their relationship with the black community and increase black representation in fire and EMS. You know, one thing I always go around saying is uh, representation matters. It's you know, representation you know, and inspiration to the uh, next generation story. that Brandon Jones hopes Sable Flames can spread. Uh, you no, know, maybe they were thinking about being a firefighter and they were able to see a black firefighter and that will be their muse to take those steps to be the black firefighter they are. The group rose from the ashes of tragedy. The Somerset Circle apartment fire in the 90s that killed five black children and that Jones says ignited racial tensions in the community and in the fire department. To combat that tension, there was a group of the, the black firefighters currently on the job at the time decided to start a organization uh, whose mission was to help those um, in that position to get out with education. Since then, they've grown their scholarships to minority communities from $500 each to $2,000 each. Black, black children are missing out on a career that is very fulfilling, um, very financially stable. But it can also be a dangerous job, which is why Sable Flames also provides a shoulder for firefighters of color to lean on. What we do is pretty tough, it's pretty tiring, and it's nice to go back to someone who can understand you culturally and help you work through your situations and problems. At their 28th fundraiser Saturday, Sable Flames will give out awards like the Richard L. Garner Community Service Award, honoring the firefighter who died after a 48-hour shift in 2018. Which was pretty tragic because I would consider him to be one of my really good friends on the department. And for the first time Saturday, they'll be honoring the five founding members to make sure the flames of their legacy never die out especially in the African-American culture, we can only trace our legacy back maybe four to five generations. I think it's imperative that we do all we can to make sure that not only does it not die, but it also thrives. In Madison, Armand Rahman, News 3 Now. And happening tomorrow at the Elver Park Neighborhood Center, there will be a pop-up event supporting dozens of black-owned businesses. The event's called Minding My Own My Black Owned Business is set to feature booths from over 35 local black and brown business owners. It runs from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. Next tonight, a fresh lower of a layer of snow on the ground, but come this weekend, some of that may be melting. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti with our first foreign forecast. Yeah, winds are already picking up out here in the backyard, but those winds are out of the southwest. It's dropping the wind chill right now, but it'll cause the temperatures to rise overnight. As we start out by taking a look at the time lapse from the WIC TV Skycam, where we had sun up to sundown sunshine uh, across all of southern Wisconsin. Beautiful sunset in the west here in Madison, but as we look at Doppler track, the nearest precipitation, some snow showers and flurries up toward Lake Superior. High temperatures today, though, on the cold side because of the fresh snow cover. 24 Madison, 23 in Janesville. Notice to the northwest, it was actually a little warmer out toward La Crosse, and that's because there's not nearly as much snow on the ground there. They got missed by this storm yesterday. Current temperatures are in the teens from Madison to the south and east, but to the north and west, temperatures are already in the 20s, and they'll continue to climb overnight. Here in Dane County, we've got uh, temperatures right now, 17 in Madison, 18 in Middleton, 17 in McFarland, and 17 in Oregon. Look for temperatures to hold steady or slowly rise from the upper teens now into the lower 20s by tomorrow morning with clear skies and breezy southwesterly winds, but we'll see milder weather for the weekend and then a storm system bears some watching for next week. I'll have more on both of those things in just a few minutes. 
Gary, thank you. A quick reminder for anyone planning to vote in next week's spring primary. Today was the last day to register ahead of time. You can still do it at the polls on Election Day, and you can also check your registration status on myvote.wi.gov. Tonight we are seeing rare footage inside a Scranton, Pennsylvania factory where weapons of war are being produced. That will eventually be shipped to the front lines in Ukraine. This plant churns out roughly 11,000 artillery shells a month. It seems like a lot, but the Ukrainian military often fires that many in just a few days. The U.S. and its allies have already sent nearly $50 billion in aid and equipment to Ukraine's military over the past year. Next week marks one year since the invasion began, and just ahead of the anniversary, a bipartisan group of five lawmakers, and that includes Congressman Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin, have sent the president a letter asking that he send Ukraine the F-16 fighter jets uh, requested by Ukrainian President Zelensky. So far, President Biden has ruled out giving Kyiv combat aircraft. It is unlikely that the lawmaker's letter will change his mind. Some incredible video out of Turkey as crews continue to search for survivors following last week's devastating earthquakes. In this video from today, we see teams rescuing a man from the rubble of a building 11 days after being buried there. While many international rescue teams have left the vast quake zone, survivors were still emerging, defying all odds. And it's not just humans being rescued. A cow was also rescued from the rubble of a collapsed barn overnight. The animal was pulled out using a crane. A local farmer said he had been visiting the site every day to feed the cow as it remained trapped. Four U.S. troops and a working dog were hurt during a raid in Syria that killed a senior ISIS leader. U.S. Central Command says members were close to the leader when an explosion happened. Three of the injured service members are reportedly stable at a medical facility in Germany. The fourth did not need to be hospitalized. Navy, Coast Guard, and FBI investigators have now wrapped up recovery efforts of the Chinese spy balloon that was shot down off the South Carolina coast. That balloon and three other aerial objects were all shot down in the last two weeks. We don't believe that, uh, uh, that the balloon was able to collect anything uh, of great significance, certainly nothing additive to what the Chinese may have already been able to do through other means. President Biden has directed a team to develop sharper protocols for when to shoot down unidentified objects in the sky. The rules will be classified and shared with Congress, but will not be made public. Just three weeks after the nation saw the disturbing footage of Tyree Nichols' violent arrest in Memphis, Tennessee, the five former police officers involved pleaded not guilty to all charges today. The 29-year-old died in a hospital three days after being pulled over and brutally beaten. Two other Memphis officers have also been relieved of duty as a result of the attack, as well as three fire department EMTs who responded to the scene. The town of Arcabutla, Mississippi, has fewer than 300 people and is now the site of America's latest mass shooting. The suspected gunman is from the town and is now in custody, but his motive is not yet known. CBS's Dina Demetrius has the details. Six people are dead after a shooting rampage through a rural Mississippi community on Friday. Authorities in Tate County say 52-year-old Richard Dale Crum killed a man outside this store around 11 a.m. I heard the gunshot from inside my house. Ethan Cash nothing. saw the attacker carrying a long gun and went to check on the victim. I go up to the truck where a guy got shot at and uh, I'm just, I check his pulse and everything, make sure he's okay. He's, he's already gone at this point. Police say Crum left the store and gunned down a woman in her home. At some point, a sheriff's deputy spotted him in a car and took him into custody after a brief chase. But by then, four others were dead. Police say two were found inside a home and two more outside near the suspect's house in Arcabutla. Crum is charged with first degree murder and now his own town is in shock. It is such a tragedy. We have a good, most people are just really good and we never would have thought anything like that would have happened here. Mississippi's governor says the suspect acted alone. Dina Demetrius, CBS News. Crum is being held without bond in the Tate County Jail. The sheriff's office says additional charges will be filed in the coming days. Next at 10, Armstrong International Airport in New Orleans throwing a special welcome party for a group of performers from Wisconsin. The Dancing Grannies are in the Big Easy to perform in this year's Carnival celebration. And when they arrived at the airport, another dancing group, the 610 Stompers, were there to greet them. Now, this was an emotional welcome for a group of women still battling some tremendous grief. Three of the Grannies and one of their volunteers were killed in the Waukesha Christmas Parade. 
How many grannies will be in New Orleans this weekend? There's going to be 17 performing with about five or six volunteers. After the tragedy, there were about six grannies left, and um, we have been rebuilding since then. It's been amazing, and it is going to be a healing process to be out there with them dancing, and dancing in honor of and memory of those that we did lose. And in Madison today, a homecoming ceremony for Miss America. UW's very own Grace Stanky won the coveted title in December. Today, she held a meet and greet at the Memorial Union. She says this trip is all about connecting with people and listening to their stories. There's so much power in listening and in observing and, and just taking it all in. And that's really what I'm doing as Miss America. And on days like today, I'm taking it all in and, and enjoying it. Wisconsin truly is remarkable and I'm feeling the love today. Stanky, who's studying nuclear engineering at the UW, is traveling the country this year advocating for her social issue, which is nuclear power and other zero carbon energy sources. So uh, tonight, Gary Canalti will rejoin us with his complete weekend forecast. Plus, we'll take a ride along with a member of the Milwaukee Airport Plow Brigade working to keep the airport up and running during snowstorms. It's the A1 Furniture and Mattress Instant Cashback Event. Save up to 40% off store-wide, plus get $50 instant cash back on every $500 you spend. Take advantage of four years free financing with qualifying purchase. Try it before you buy it at A1 Furniture. Why are there two extra seats? I know, Uncle Dane and his giant beard. The Volkswagen Atlas with best-in-class third-row legroom. Visit your local dealer today to learn more about our carefree coverage suite, standard on all 2023 Volkswagen models. I became an orthopedic surgeon for a lot of reasons. For a lot of reasons. For a lot of reasons. To help you take walks again. To ease your pain. To rebuild your strength. And at every step along the way. We take the time to answer all your questions. We're here because we care. We care about you. 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 They care about me. Sauk Prairie Healthcare Orthopedics, now offering robotic assisted knee replacement. Lake Ridge may be a new name, but it isn't a new bank. It's one built on over a century of community commitment. One equipped with all the knowledge and resources of 145 collective years of experience. Monona Bank and State Bank of Cross Plains are coming together as one. As Lake Ridge Bank, we're doing more together for you. After violence turned Waukesha's Christmas parade into tragedy, Judge Jennifer Doro ensured justice was served, maintaining order, protecting the rights of victims. Her grace under fire won praise nationally. Now Judge Jennifer Doro is ready to serve on the Supreme Court. Wife, mother, prosecutor. Judge Doro's life's work is keeping Wisconsin families safe. It's no surprise Judge Doro is law enforcement's choice. The tested judicial leader, Judge Jennifer Doro for Supreme Court. Why are there two extra seats? I know, Uncle Dane and his giant beard. The Volkswagen Atlas, with best-in-class third-row legroom. Visit your local dealer today to learn more about our carefree coverage suite, standard on all 2023 Volkswagen models. Get instant cash back on every mattress purchase over $500 only at A1 Furniture. Save up to 40% off top name brand mattresses. Plus, get instant cash back and four years free financing with qualified purchase. Try it before you buy it at A1 Furniture. For 20% of its victims, the fallout from concussion can last months or years. It affects their work, their family life. It affects everything. News 3 Now, Charlotte Deleste shares her personal battle with the invisible injury. Thursday at 10. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Welcome back and check this out. The world's tallest digital Happy President's Day message lighting up the South Florida skyline on a 60-story skyscraper in downtown Miami. The 700-foot-tall Paramount Miami Tower features the world's most technologically advanced animation lighting system. President's Day, by the way, is on Monday. Packs of chocolates sold to Target for Valentine's Day are being recalled due to an allergy risk. These eight ounce bags of favorite day branded Valentine's milk chocolate covered caramels were voluntarily recalled. They may contain tree nuts, which isn't noted on its packaging. 
Consumers can call Target Guest Relations for a refund. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources reminding ice fishers that permanent ice shanty removal deadlines begin this weekend. Now we have a list of specific locations and dates at channel3000.com. Portable ice shanties can be used after these dates but must be removed from the ice at the end of each day and when they are not actively in use. The Milwaukee area yesterday seeing a few more inches of snow compared to what we got in the Madison area and when these storms happen a brigade of snowplow drivers is keeping the airport there operational. Nick Bohr has the story. All right, so here we go. It's a remarkably choreographed operation. Nearly two dozen drivers and millions of dollars of equipment. A snow team effort to keep the flights flying. It benefits the airlines, it benefits our department, and it benefits people that are flying into our airport, knowing that Mitchell Airport knows how to take care of snow. John Vozari is behind the wheel of a massive combo, a plow in front and sweeper behind. He and other members of Cobra team take one half of the runway, while Tiger team gets the other half. They clear it in one remarkable pass. Other airports come and see what we actually do and how we implement it from paper to out on the airfield. The whole operation involving over two dozen vehicles allows them to clear the runways enough for flights to take off and land. They do it in just 18 minutes. There's always whiteouts like you can see now. It's starting to pick up again. Uh, it gets pretty dangerous at times. You always got to be aware of what you're doing. The Tiger team's Dave Sweeney says they work 12-hour shifts. Planes will take off and land, and based on testing and feedback from the pilots, the snow team may keep it up almost continuously, especially when it's snowing like this. It feels great that, you know, we can keep something open for someone to go to a job, trip, you know, vacation, whatever they need to do. Um, yeah, it feels pretty good. Well, that was Nick Bohr reporting an airport spokesperson says the methods were developed based on a study that was commissioned by the airport more than a decade ago. He said new machinery and the new coordinated plowing have radically reduced the time the runways are closed during snowstorms. Well, back here in Madison, a lot of people are enjoying the return of the snow. The city's Parks Department and Madison Nordic Ski Club teaming up to give people a chance to learn how to cross-country ski at Elver Park. Experienced skiers from Mad Norski showed off the basics to get started into the sport. The free workshop didn't require a ski permit and included equipment for those who needed it. Gary's back, sunny Friday. It was nice to see the sun, but boy, that snow out there kept us chilly, Gary. Yeah, boy, you know, I, I guess rule number one, if you're gonna be on skis is to be able to stay upright. That's true. That's, 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 really where, I, that's where you lose me. <laughs> <laughs> well, there'll be some time to uh, get out there and maybe put the skis on for a couple of days, but also with the clear skies tonight, potential is there that we could see the northern lights. The uh, NOAA Space Weather Center uh, prediction for tonight shows that the potential for seeing the uh, aurora borealis is about as far south as uh, northern Illinois. So that would put all of Wisconsin in there. Northern parts of the state a much better chance of being able to see the nor northern lights. But around here, if you get away from the city lights and look up to the north with a clear view, that would be something to watch. Uh, President's Day weekend forecast actually looking pretty nice for tomorrow. High temperature of 41 degrees with partly sunny skies. Maybe a little more cloud cover, a little more wind for Sunday with a high temperature of 43. Both days should be dry. And then and for President's Day itself, 37 degrees on Monday with a chance for some afternoon flurries. Three things you need to know in our forecast. High temperatures around 40 for the weekend, but will turn colder gradually next week. And then we watch the prospects for some light snow from to, uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday and Thursday. But more importantly, there could be some, a period of sleet and freezing rain there. Uh, taking a look at some of the longer range computer models, this is uh, future track snowfall from the European computer model showing the potential for a pretty major winter storm for the northern half of the state. But the amounts really drop off through southern Wisconsin. But at least our northern viewing area will have to watch out for the potential for heavier snow if that forecast works out. The GFS computer model from the United States government has even more snow up to the north but a more narrow area of heavy snow. Twin Cities, Eau Claire would still get hit, but here in Madison, less than an inch of snow expected. 
The big problem, I think, for us is going to be the potential for freezing rain and sleet. The European computer model shows the potential from Madison southward of a quarter to maybe as much as three quarters of an inch of freezing rain. That could cause some really treacherous travel if that does work itself out. But the GFS computer model is warmer. It actually brings some rain in here. So we see a quarter of an inch of ice in Madison before it changes over to rain. The more significant freezing rain would be farther to the north and then eventually change over to snow. Right now, though, the jet stream basically from west to east, so it's bringing a milder Pacific air. Uh, here in the Midwest, we've got just a trough of low pressure out to the west of us. Winds are out of the southwest ahead of it, so temperatures now that are in the teens are already going to climb into the 20s by tomorrow morning, and we'll be looking for mild weather at least for a couple of days this weekend. Tomorrow, partly sunny skies, milder, high temperature at 41, thanks to a south-southwesterly breeze that will continue through the day. Planning your day for tomorrow, high 38 Mount Horeb, 41 in Middleton, 38 in Wanakee with partly sunny skies across the rest of southern Wisconsin. Again, a little warmer to the north and west where there's a little less snow cover on the ground. 42 La Crosse, 42 in Camp Douglas, but 38 in Janesville and 37 in Monroe. The first warm 7 to 10 day forecast, low 40s for Saturday and Sunday, upper 30s on Monday. The time period to watch would be from Tuesday night into Wednesday and maybe even into Thursday, but by that time everything will change back to snow. We'll see falling temperatures on Thursday, which is some light snow expected, and maybe a chance of snow showers from Friday night into Saturday morning. Temperatures at least will be colder at the end of next week. Badger men's hockey hoping to keep the momentum going after a massive upset last week, and we got more from Game 1 with Michigan State on the other side of the break. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. I'm voting for Judge Janet Protasiewicz for Supreme Court. She believes in our freedom to make our own decisions when it comes to abortion. Extremists want to ban abortion. Even in cases of rape and the health of the mother. Judge Janet Protasiewicz is the change Wisconsin needs. The Build, Remodel, and Landscape Show is coming and admission is free. Shop, compare, and say big. This Friday, Saturday, and Sunday only at the Monona Terrace Convention Center. Chicago. Celebrating 25 years of Broadway razzle-dazzle. The Associated Press calls Chicago the most entertaining musical of the decade. Paint the town again with Chicago the Musical. At Overture, March 21st through 26th. Tickets at Overture.org. Are you a T-Mobile customer in Wisconsin? Recently, T-Mobile disclosed that 37 million customer accounts were hacked, putting your personal information at risk. Don't let identity theft ruin your credit score and cost you thousands of dollars. Call Lawton and Gates for a free consultation and learn your rights. You've got this. Your big moment on their big day. The dress? Another one you'll never wear. Gift? Practical. Yeah, you've got this. Just like Associated Banks got you with free overdraft protection transfers. So when you get invited to your third destination wedding in as many months, we'll be there with you. When we first met Todd, we thought Jen was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you've got this with Associated Bank. Race to savings on Patriot Lighting at Menards. Check out our great selection of lighting products and give any room a coordinated look. Patriot Lighting is available in so many unique styles and finishes, you're sure to find the right lighting solution for you. Race to savings on interior lights from Patriot Lighting and give your home the update it deserves. Check out our lighting showroom or see all our lighting options on Menards.com. Save big money at Menards. Join me in the 608 weekdays on News 3 Now This Morning. A former prosecutor, now circuit court judge, Janet Protasiewicz. On the Supreme Court, she'll be a common sense judge. She believes in abortion rights, fairness for all, and protecting public safety. Janet Protasiewicz for Supreme Court. P B P B and J P B for we go. P before we go. P before we go. <laughs> See you tomorrow? Yeah.
And just like that, the Badger men's hockey team drops the puck on their final home series of the regular season. This weekend's outing comes against a familiar conference foe, Michigan State. Now, the last time these teams met, the Badgers got swept. But they're hoping to keep the energy and momentum up after last weekend's upset of Minnesota. Now, Sparty has other plans. From the jump, it's all Michigan State. They're up three and nada after one period. Time for Bucky to get to work. Second period on the power play, Tyson Jugnoff nets his sixth goal of the season to make it 3-1. Well, the next four minutes see three more goals scored. One of them off the stick of Zach Erdahl, two from the Spartans. Michigan State takes the game 1-6-2. to two. Regional round for high school boys hockey. McFarland heading to Oregon. Not a lot of offense in the first period outside of Andrew Jaika. He beats the defender's left side to bury the first goal of the game putting the Panthers up 1-0 and clearly the crowd's loving it. Well, that's good because Oregon is not done yet. Mason Anderson feeds Easton Lindert, flips it in, makes it a two-goal game. That score holds. Oregon advances with a 2-0 shutout. Now, while the men's team has two more series left in the regular season, this weekend is it for the Badger women's team, and they've got a tough task ahead of them with the number one team in the country coming to Madison. But hey, this weekend is more than just a series with the Buckeyes. Sunday is set to be a pretty special one for seven players as it's senior day. The ceremony will take place before the puck drops on game two with Ohio State, and it's a moment that Nicole Lamantia is and isn't ready for. Definitely bittersweet. Um, it's been on my mind. Uh, kind of just didn't want it to come all year. So, um, coach, is, coach is serious when he said, you know, it comes quick. And I'm so happy that I've had this extra year. Uh, I can't, I can't imagine it going any other way. And I've loved this place and just super excited for what's to come this weekend with my family and my friends in town. Big eight top dogs Middleton on the road at Sun Prairie West. The Cardinals kicked off the festivities. Will Comfort with the slash and score to put Middleton on the board. SP West kept it close throughout Tyler Haney with the transition. Trey bomb and the Wolves took their first lead of the half on that bucket. The cards are inevitable. Caden Fosdick with the authority to build the Milton lead. The Cardinals improved to 16-1 in conference play as they steal a 51-50 win on the road. Steve Stricker spending his weekend down in the Sunshine State competing in the Chubb Classic. The first round, solid one for the Madison native. Four birdies and an eagle this afternoon has him carding a 67. He currently sits five under and tied for 10th. And Tiger Woods is back on the links this weekend for the Genesis Invitational, the annual tournament that he hosts. But the second round, anything but smooth sailing for Woods. Currently tied for 60th. Car to three over 74 today. We'll be right back. After a crash with a semi truck, everything can change instantly. At Gruber Law Offices, we have the knowledge and experience to make sure you're protected. And we're here to help whenever you need us. Gruber Law Offices, one call, that's all. It's Auto Show. The deals start now, and so should you. Get started on your next Ford SUV like Bronco, Explorer, or the new Escape. Get here to get a deal on the SUV's number one in brand loyalty. It's Auto Show. The deals start now, and so should you. During Auto Show, choose Flex Buy on Escape, Edge, or Explorer with 3.9% APR financing for 66 months plus 1,000 Auto Show cash. Every single moment takes your breath away. Every powerful emotion makes your spirit soar. Everyone who sees it remembers it forever. Join the circle of life at The Lion King. Coming to Overture Center May 11th through 28th. Tickets on sale now at Overture.org. As a veteran of our country's armed services, you have already made the ultimate sacrifice. Why should you have to continue to do that? Through no fault of your own, you may be experiencing hardships, such as the inability to pay rent, utilities, or receive other life-sustaining services. And once again, you're called upon by your family to serve and protect. We want you to know we are here to support you. The Veterans Rental Assistance Program was created by and for people living in Wisconsin with benefit approvals being issued to veterans in just days, not months. It's not easy to ask for a hand up, but we are clear in our mission. 
No Wisconsin veteran should ever have to face homelessness or lose heat, power, or water again. 833-WIS-VRAP. That's 833-947-8727. Madison liberals are trying to take over the Wisconsin Supreme Court. That's why we need to elect conservative justice Dan Kelly. Dan Kelly has a proven record of protecting our freedoms and cast the deciding vote to end the COVID lockdowns of our schools and businesses. Sheriffs across Wisconsin have endorsed Dan Kelly because he has a record of enforcing the law. On February 21st, vote conservative justice Dan Kelly for Wisconsin Supreme Court. Fair Courts America paid for and is responsible for the content of this advertising. Every single day, we help families that have been tragically impacted in truck crashes. And you'll never pay us a fee until we win your case. Truck crash? Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Channel 3000 Plus. Watch from your streaming media player or mobile device. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Finally tonight, a spectacular trio of merging galaxies takes center stage in this new image from NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. They say these three galaxies are set on a collision course and will eventually merge into a single larger galaxy. This image comes from an observation designed to help astronomers understand the origin of the largest, most massive galaxies in the universe. I thought that was another one of Gary's weather maps with snow (laughs) moving in. No, they don't tell you it's going to take about 10 billion years for those stars to merge either. We won't be around when they do. We'll still be around with some snow on the ground this weekend, but some of that will melt. Live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam. Skies are clear here. Could see the northern lights tonight, too. Keep that in mind. Temperatures right now in the teens across Dane County. 19 right now in Edgerton. 17 in McFarland and uh, 18 degrees in Mount Horeb. But notice it is a little warmer out to the west. La Crosse is at 24, so is Black River Falls. Temperatures will actually start rising overnight. Wind chills right now make it feel like it's in the single digits, but those winds are out of the southwest, and that's what'll fuel the warm up. So by morning, we'll be around 23. Look for a high tomorrow of 41 with partly sunny skies, and then the potential for a winter storm toward the middle of next week. All right, Gary, thank you, and thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 10. Do something good and have a great weekend.